And uh, we're going to talk about it. Don't forget now, two weeks from this morning will be our anniversary, our 16th anniversary, and we're planning a big day. Everybody want to go out on the bus route and visit that week on the 9th? We're having a big day, cookout, hot dogs. Uh, uh, we're going to have a, a jump house and all kind of stuff back here and have some games on the 10th of July, two weeks from today. Don't forget to pray for uh, Jeremy. He had to work this weekend uh, down in Columbia, South Carolina, and that's where they're at. And uh, uh, others are, you know, uh, had to work or be gone or something. So remember them in prayer tonight. Genesis chapter 3, and everybody knows this story. This is the story of the fall of mankind, Adam and Eve. And the Bible said in verse 1, Now the serpent was more subtle, sneaky, uh, crafty, than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he, that's the serpent, said unto the woman. Ladies, you need to really study that. That's not an accident that's in the Bible like that. Yea, if God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, that was her mistake right there. She should have never had no conversation with the devil. She should have just turned around and walked off. Uh, she shouldn't have said, well, I'm flattered, and who are you? And I don't think I know. She should have said, Adam, and, and plead the blood like that. That's right. Uh, and so tonight she said this. She began to talk, and they, they sinned. And, and uh, uh, verse 3 said, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Here he goes. He says something else. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, little g, knowing good and evil. Your eyes, you're going to see things you've never seen before, know stuff you've ever known before. And boy, it really done them a lot of good, didn't it? Uh, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. That's a dangerous thing. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. They didn't even realize it before. They didn't even realize, had no shame, naked in the Garden of Eden. They're the only two people in the world, and God had placed them there. By the way, that's what everybody in Hollywood is trying to get back to now. Perfect environment, run around naked. The only problem is it can't be done now. Too late. That, that happened back in the Garden of Eden, but it ain't going to happen now. Verse number 7, And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron, tried to cover up. Verse 8, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam said, and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. There's so much study in that you can't even get started in it. Uh, amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Look. And he said, Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. He wasn't afraid of God before, but now he's afraid because he's naked. And I hid myself. Verse 11. Everybody looking at it? And he said, God did, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And then the story goes. We'll stop reading that tonight. Verse 11, God said, Adam, who told you that you was naked? Now give me attention just for a second tonight. I want to preach on that little thought. I, I, when God looked at Adam, and God looked at Adam and said, Adam, what's your problem? He said, I, look, we was naked, and I, I tried to hit, hide myself. And the Lord said, who told you you was naked? Well, what happened, the devil deceived him, and the devil talked him into it, and then he realized it and brought, brought shame to himself. So with that thought in mind tonight, I want to preach on this subject. Who told you that? Who told you that? You know, every once in a while growing up, we'd hear people like somebody come in with a big tail and they'd say, Boy, I heard this. Thing. And you know what? Everybody would say, Who told you that? Where'd you hear that? Where'd you get that? Well, I want to ask you that question tonight. Who told you that? In days gone by, I ended up pastoring churches many, many years and preaching written thousands and thousands of times. 
and street work and evangelism. I've been in hospitals, jails, every condition imaginable about it, trailer parks, rich houses, out on the streets. I've preached on the streets in different cities and been on the streets in California and, and, uh, and New York City and uh, in, in Dallas, Texas and Detroit, Michigan and down in Florida and every place I've run. I've met all kinds of people. And you hear all kinds of things. There are many voices, many things. People got a lot to say out there tonight. And my question is, who told you that? So I'm going to preach on tonight. Who told you that? Who told you that? And the first thing I'm going to say tonight is we talk about our Bible reading. Our Bible reading. You know, I've had a lot of people come up and tell me, uh, I had somebody tell me not long ago, they said, I just can't read the Bible. I just can't. Well, I'm going to ask you a question tonight. Who told you that? Uh, the Lord didn't. Do you think the Holy Ghost come down and said, you can't read the Bible. So, no, sir. Who told you that? Who tells a person they can't read the Bible? The devil does. The devil, the same devil that talked to Adam and Eve, same devil that told them they'd be better off if they eat the fruit, same devil is the same devil that convinced you that you can't read the Bible and you can't get through it. I'm telling you tonight, God wants us to read His Word. I, I've heard people say, I just can't read it through. I get bogged down. One man called me this the other day and he said, I want to ask you something. He said, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but he said, all that stuff in the Bible. He said, good night. He said, I, I can't make heads or tails out of some of it. And I said, that's all right. God don't say you have to understand it all, but he does want you to read it all. I'm going to ask you a question tonight. Who told you you couldn't read the Bible? Who convinced you you couldn't go all the way through? So who told you that you couldn't keep a marker and keep reading and keep reading and keep reading and get through the Word of God? Who told you that? It wasn't the Lord, I can promise you that. Who told you? Who told you that the, the King James Bible is just a good translation. I heard a preacher say that the other night. Uh, uh, went to church and uh, he said, uh, he said, now those independent Baptists, they're arguing about the King James and, uh, excuse me, they're trying to say it's more than just a good translation. And uh, uh, he said, uh, it's, it's a translation like any of the other ones. Let me ask you a question tonight. Who told you that? It wasn't the Lord. I guarantee you that. The Lord never told you the King James Bible is just a quote a good translation. Who told you that? It wasn't the Lord. I'm telling you tonight that God said heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. They are preserved from this generation uh, forever and ever. I'm going to ask you all a question tonight. How did our grandma and our great-grandma and our great papa with a second and third and fourth grade education understand that book and live by it and love it and learn it and and live it, and live by it, and die by it, and brother, we've got people with a college education that can't understand thee, and thou, and saith, and with, and stuff like that. I'm telling you tonight, the devil told you not to read that book. The devil told you. Uh, who, who told you all the Bible had in it was names? Who told you that? Other people say, well, all in there is a bunch of pages of names. Who told you that? God sure didn't. I'm telling you, they, they, might, they might be 10 pages of names or 15 out of 1,000 pages in the Bible, maybe. I'm telling you, God never told you it was all names. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the devil told you that. You know, I've heard people say all kinds of things in the Bible. man told me one time, uh, he said, well... You know, it's like the Bible says, every tub will sit on its own bottom. Uh, well, I want to ask you something tonight. Who told you that? Uh, uh, the Lord never told you that. Now, it might be true, uh, but it ain't in the Bible. Uh, you know what people used to say all the time? They'd say, you know what the Bible says? Cleanliness is next to what? Godliness. You know, I mean, some of you sitting right here probably thinks that's in the Bible. I don't know. Who told you that? The Lord didn't because it ain't in there. Now, it's true, really. I mean, you know what Mom said when I was growing up? My mom said, the Bible says you're supposed to burn everything a rat touches. And, you know, it does teach back in the Old Testament. They kept stuff clean and everything. And I grew up thinking that's in the Bible. You're supposed to burn everything a rat touches. I thought, what if it runs on my foot? <laughs> and uh, she, I said, Mom, I got saved and started reading the Bible. I thought, who told you all that? Uh, uh, the Lord didn't tell them that. It don't say that. 
I've heard people say all of my life, uh, you know, the Bible says rob Peter to pay Paul. Uh, and, and it don't say that. I'm telling you, I've heard people say uh, uh, cleanness next to godliness, godliness. I've heard people say spare the rod and spoil the child. I've heard people say, well, you know, the Bible said right before the Lord comes back, you can't tell winter from summer. Uh, who told you that? I'm going to ask you tonight, listen, brother, you better make sure who's talking to you. You better check out that voice that's talking to you with that book. You better spend more time in that book than you do watching TV. You better spend more time in God's book than you do listening to the world's opinion of that book. You better listen to what God said about man instead of listening to what man thinks about God and religion. I'm telling you, the devil will talk to you if you ain't, listen, if you ain't real careful and keep listening to him. I say tonight, uh, I've heard about this thing uh, going on uh, on the Obama, uh, our president the other day, the president the other day, he was making a, a reference to this transgender uh, controversy that's going on, and uh, where the, he made the uh, statement that boys can go in girls' bathrooms as long as they feel like a girl, and girls can go in boys' bathrooms as long as they feel like a boy, and you know what he said? He, he tried to make it sound like the Bible, he got that out of the Bible. And he said, uh, he said, well, being a Christian, I have a high regard for the golden rule. You know, doing to others, you'd have them doing to you, which that ain't, they don't say that's a golden rule. You know what the golden rule is, don't you, in the world? He that has the gold makes the rules. Uh, uh, but that ain't, that, ain't, uh, that ain't in the Bible like that. But anyway, uh, our president said this. He said, uh, being a Christian, I had to remember the golden rule. You know, it's pretty high up there. That's what he said. It's pretty high up there with me. And he, said, he was trying to say the Bible teaches that men can go in girls' restrooms if they feel like a girl. Now, I'm going to tell you tonight, listen, I, I, I respect him as my president, but I'd ask, who told you that? I mean, God didn't tell you that. The Holy Ghost never told you it's all right for a man to go in a girl's bathroom. The Holy Ghost or the Bible never told you that it's all right for a girl to feel like a man or be a man or want to be a man or a man to want to be a woman or you was born on the Holy Ghost. Who told you all that? I'm telling you, I, I, we're living in a time when you better check out what you hear by this book because the Lord never said such stuff as that. Who told you that? I heard about man uh, uh, the other day. Uh, matter of fact, uh, sister right over there, Tiffany, uh, uh, she called me in. She's not the only one. I've had two or three people ask me lately about this thing called the Mandela Effect. How many of you have heard of the Mandela effect? Anybody? Good. You don't need none. It's crazy. Uh, they, they got this thing going on where that uh, uh, the devil has all kinds of power to change everything and maybe what we've always believed really ain't right and, and it's messing with everybody's mind. Strong delusion. Now, there will be a strong delusion sent on this world. No doubt about it. And the world is crazy. If you want to see some crazy stuff, Look up that, if you want to study a little bit, Mandela, M-A-N-D-E-L-L-A effect. There's all kinds of stuff on the Bible. And they're saying, they're even saying now that the Bible has been changed while we was asleep and didn't realize it. And what's happened is the devil's trying to slip a counterfeit in the, in the people's minds to make us doubt the Word of God because of stuff we don't always believe, like cleanliness, sex to godliness, uh, spare the rod. There's people that would fight you all day long, swearing up and down, the Bible says spare the rod and spoil the child. And it don't say that. Uh, it said, he that spareth his rod hateth his son, but it does not say, all right, we'll give you an example right now. I mean, how many of you, you believe, and have heard all of your life, that the Bible said the day will come when the lion and the lamb shall lay down together. Raise your hand. You've heard that all your life, right? You've, you see ever, in doctor's office everywhere, the picture, there's the lion, there's the lamb, the millennium, everything worked out great. Guess what? Who told you that? Take your Bible and turn to Isaiah chapter 11. Let me show you something here tonight. Who told you the Bible said that? I tell you who told you, uh, the world and the flesh. Look at Isaiah chapter 6, uh, chapter 11. And then when you get Isaiah chapter 11 with one hand, get Isaiah 65 with the other hand. Isaiah 11 with one hand, and Isaiah chapter 65 with the other hand. You got it? Now look at it. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse number 6. Isaiah 11, 6. Some of you would have bet $100 that that's in the Bible. You say, preacher, I know that's in the Bible. I've heard on the lie. What does your Bible say there in Isaiah 11, 6? What does it say? Somebody holler it out. Read it, Raj. Real big and loud there. 
There you go. Wolf. We'll lay down on the land. Now turn to Isaiah 65. Look at Isaiah 65 right quick. Let me show you another one. Let me ask you a question tonight. Who told you the Bible said the lion and the lamb shall lay down together? You, and that's where they get the Bible's been changed. They're saying now that while we wasn't paying attention, the devil changed the King James Bible, the wording of it. And it used to say lion, but now it says wolf. You wouldn't believe it. That's what they're saying. Which is making you doubt your Bible. Look at Isaiah 65. Where is that verse? Which verse is it in Isaiah 65? 25? What would you say? 25. Isaiah 65, 25. There it is again. Read that, Jimmy. Read that real loud. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw. There you go. All right. The serpent ain't going to get it. His curses ain't going to be lifted. He's still going on the, serpent, on the ground. The serpent shall still eat dust. But the lion will eat straw and become a vegetarian, and the wolf will lay down with the lamb. Bible don't say that. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? You hear, who told you that? Who told you that? You say, well, Brother Danny, that's what it's always been. Been there since 1611, and it's been there even in the Greek Old Testament before, uh, before it was in in the Hebrew Old Testament. I'm telling you tonight, you better check out who's talking to you. There's a bunch of other examples like that we could give. Uh, tonight, but uh, don't say boys can go in girls' bathrooms, and it don't say the lion will lay down with the lamb. It said the wolf. You know what they're saying in the Mandela effect? They're saying that the devil literally changed the words of the Bible in the last year or so, so we will accept a wolf laying down and being with Christians. That's right. Who told you that? Who told you that? You know, if it wasn't for that book right there in the Holy Ghost, you wouldn't even know what was right, what was wrong, or anything. You can't go by your feelings. You sure can't go by Grandma's poo hole scripture. You've got to go by what? Thus saith the Lord, Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Amen? Who told you that? Let me ask you a quick second question tonight. Who told you that about your church dealings? Uh... I've heard people say this. Think like this. They should appreciate me being here. I'm doing this church a favor by even coming. Who told you that? It wasn't the Lord. It wasn't. There are actually people that think they are so smart and talented and valuable that they are, listen, if I come, you ought to appreciate it. I've even had people say to me, well, we ought to get paid to come. What are you talking about? Do you realize tonight there are people all over this world that would give anything in the world to have a church like this that uh, just believe the Bible and come to it and would feel honored to walk in here and worship. And you think you're something special like we should pay you to come to church? Who told you that? It was not the Holy Ghost of God. You know, uh, people say this. People think as long as you live a little bit better than somebody else, uh, then you're all right with God. Who told you that? Well, you know, said, well, well uh, uh, my dress is to hear, but theirs are to hear, so I'm right with God. Who told you that? <laughs> the Lord didn't. <laughs> the Lord didn't. Somebody said this. They said, uh, well, so-and-so, he gets drunk every night. I just drink a little bit. Who told you that? Who told you it was all right to drink a little bit? Wasn't God. Amen. Hey, who told you everybody in the church was a hypocrite? I remember, everybody's a hypocrite. Every one of them. One guy said, uh, I ain't coming to church. And the preacher said, oh, why not? He said, tell me hypocrite. The preacher said, come on, one more ain't going to hurt us. Hey, <laughs> that's right, buddy. Listen, you, you, can't, you ain't got no right to look down your nose. I think the devil invented nose book, face book. I do. I believe the devil invented it. Don't everybody shout at the same time. I'm not saying you're sinning if you got it. I'm not. If you got it, use it right. If you Lord, I don't know you might use it right. But a lot of you claim you do. Uh, just a bunch of nosy people. Went, well, I read this and I read that and I read this and I read that and I read that. And then I read that. I mean, who told you to get into a bunch of mess like that? I heard about them fighting on there about, about the... Uh, shooting down in Orlando and, and all of that and saying, that's a bunch of junk people. I'm going to tell you something, buddy. Uh, you know what every one of them need to do? Go on bus route Saturday. 
Say amen right there. Get you a bus route. Them preachers out west, that's talking about uh, killing all the gays and all of that. Listen, I understand Old Testament law. I ain't stupid. I understand sins are punishable by death, even in Romans chapter 1. But, you know, every one of us deserves to die. Amen. You know what Jesus said? Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above everybody else. Nay, I say unto you, except ye repent, you all likewise perish. You better keep your head straight. I mean, they, 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 they do deserve to die. But you do too and I do too. I'll get criticized for that. But I'm going to ask you a question. Who told you that junk? Who told you it's your job to straighten out the world? It's our job to preach the Word of God I got it, preachers. I got it. I understand the difference in Old Testament and New Testament. I understand the Old Testament set up and the, the deal with the Jews. I understand the New Testament under grace. I got it. I got it figured out. Please don't try, try, to, try to tell me. I'm going to ask you something. Who told you? It's your job to straighten out all the other preachers and all the other singers and everybody in church is wrong but you. A lady in our church, she's not here tonight, had some sickness in the family. She texted me while I was gone to uh, Florida this week. She said, Pastor, we appreciate you and Miss Kelly. She said, thank you so much. for." Her. She said, do you need anything while you're gone? And I sent her one back and said, and I can't think of anything, but thank you so much. That means she said, well, we'll be there. We'll back you up. We'll go on bus route Saturday. We'll help visit. We'll do whatever we can. You know, that's the way church members think and talk when they're really, really right with God. You know how you think when you're not right with God? I don't know about half these people in here. If they were right with God as I would, we'd have great revival. I'm right and everybody else is wrong. That's how you know you're backslidden full of the devil. Hey, you ever been sitting in church, ladies and men, and all of a sudden somebody say to you, nobody here likes you. You don't have no friends here. Have you noticed they'll just walk right by you and not even speak? Have you not, do you honestly think the Holy Ghost is talking to you like that? Do you honestly think the Holy Ghost is going to come up and say, she didn't speak to you? I don't. He don't do like that. He don't do. He don't cause division. He don't cause you to feel sorry for yourself. The Holy Ghost, who told you that? You better make up your mind. Say, you better watch out who you're listening to. I've heard people say, well, I just, I just don't feel nothing here at my church. I'm just going to leave and go to another. Who told you that? The Lord don't talk like that. I'm telling you, the Lord don't talk like that. I'm telling you, you better watch out in your church affairs. A man told me one time, man told me one time, he said, uh, he said, now Danny, I, I, he said, you shouldn't have preached. I went off and preached somewhere, and he said, you didn't have no business doing that. And I said, well, them 11 people got saved down there this week, appreciated me coming down there and preaching. And he said, oh, they'd have got saved anyway. And I want to look at him and say, who told you that? The Lord didn't. The Lord didn't say, it don't matter if you preach or not, they're going to get saved anyway. I didn't want the Lord said. The Lord said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth shall be saved. And the Bible said, whosoever is called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the Bible said, how shall they hear without a preacher? And the Bible said, uh, uh, it's not God's will that any should perish that all can repentance. And the Holy Ghost didn't tell. Now listen, people, that ain't true. That's a hyper-Calvinist that believes that people that's going to be saved are going to be saved anyway. And I know, I know preachers are crazy too. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost didn't tell you that. The Holy Ghost didn't tell you, oh, it don't matter if you witness or not, they're all going to be saved anyway. Look, we spent millions of dollars, churches do in America, sending missionaries to foreign countries to tell them people how to get saved. If they'd never heard the gospel and they're going to be saved anyway, wouldn't it be better off just not tell them? Uh, just don't tell them, they'll all go to heaven. <laughs> told you that. Who told you? You heard about my Mother's Day sermon? I must have been right with God on Mother's Day, boy, because we're still hearing feedback on that. I, and I mean, I, I try to be nice to cut. I just preached a sweet little sermon on what kind of mother are you. And, uh, uh, and not all mothers are good mothers always. And I'm telling you something, buddy. It, what, who told them that? I, one lady quoted me and said I said stuff that I didn't say. So it wasn't the Lord that told them that. Who told you that? 
Who told you that you don't have to give your tithes and offering because other people don't anyway? Who told you, well, good night, because them other people don't pay? Why should you? Been hearing any voices like that? Who told you it's all right to hold back your offering? I understand what the Bible teaches. I got it all the way through the Old Testament. I ain't stupid. I studied it 40 years. I'm telling you, I know what it says. I'm telling you, I understand there's not a direct command in New Testament of grace to give 10%. I understand all that. Jesus endorsed it. Paul said, put it all in the storehouse. Everybody as God has prospered them. And that thing teaches from one end to the other that we're to give to God first and honor Him. And a Christian under grace surely ought to give as good as a Jew under the law did. Who told you it's all right that you didn't have to give? The church got enough money anyway. Anybody been telling you stuff like that? I'm going to tell you, I'm not the best Christian in the world, but I am super honest and picky and, I mean, I mean I'm down to the ridiculous stage when it comes to money and finances and doing right with God. You don't believe me? Ask my wife. Ask my daughters. Brother, I don't take a penny of money that I think belongs to God. My offering goes in that plate every Sunday when I've got it and an offering on top of that and whatever else I can do from time to time. You know why? I want to be right with God. Who told you it was all right? You didn't have to give because you was having it hard financially or there's enough people in church got money that don't include you. Who told you that? I give my tithes and my offerings every week. When I, I, didn't, I didn't get none this week, so I didn't put none this morning, but it's coming next week. But every time I get paid, my money goes in that plate. Every time. And an offering on top of that. I'll tell you something. I get a check every month from a businessman in Georgia. He sends a check, and he makes it out to me, Reverend Danny Castle. And he says, and he called me on the phone. He said, I watch y'all every week. I love what you're doing up there. I'm going to help you out. I'm saying, I said, well, what do you want me to do when people make it out? I said, what do you want me to do with this? He says, well, it's to you or whatever you want to do with it. Now, if he'd have said that's just for you, I'd have felt okay that it was to me. But he said, whatever you want to do with it, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, he might want that to go to the buses, or he might, and I've never took one penny of it. I signed that check, made out to me, and I put it in an offering every month. And I don't have to. He told me. He said, it's made out to you, and it's yours if you want it. But I'm scared that it might should have been meant for God's work, and I'm giving it to the Lord. I'm not bragging. I'm not a great Christian. I'm just telling you, that's how I think you ought to do with your finances. Be super honest. If you're going to err, err on the judgment of you losing, not him losing. I'll tell you something else. You're going to think I'm crazy. You're going to think I'm crazy. We're coming back from Florida. We stopped at a truck stop. I know. I know. And I'm not, I'm, I know I'm crazy sometimes. We went in and got something to eat. I got some pizza, two pieces of pizza, two pieces of five dollars. We ate going up the road. I appreciate my wife being willing to do that. A lot of women would say, no, I want to stop and go in and sit down somewhere. You know, we'd have been an hour and a half later getting home. So we stopped, got gas, got stuff, eat it, coming up the road. Appreciate her being willing to do that. And uh, really, a lot of people wouldn't. And you know what? We was coming up the road, and I said, oh, my goodness. I got this cup of ice and it said 55 cents, and I didn't pay for it. And we was way up the interstate. And she said, what are you? I said, you think we ought to go back? She said, no, nah, don't worry about it. <laughs> no, she didn't. She didn't. She said, 55 cents? And you know what? I can hear mom. I can hear her in my head. Don't take one red cent. Don't take one red cent. Listen, it's just as wrong still 55 cent as it is $55. Amen. Some of y'all sitting there like, oh, uh, well, where, do you, where does it become a sin? $58? $58 is a sin, but 58 cents ain't. 
Two dollars a sin? Is it wrong still two dollars? My mom said don't take one red. I could hear her saying that, not one red cent. So when I got home, I called 411. I felt stupid doing this. I said, I need the number of pilot truck stop down near Jacksonville, Florida. And they gave me a number and name. I said, that don't sound right. Just across the Georgia line. And they said, oh, we have one here in King. I said, that's the one right there. And I called the number, and I said, I want to talk to the manager. He said, yes, sir. I said, uh, I was in your store, and I said, uh, I got a cup of ice and walked out with it without paying. And that guy, I could hear his mouth dropping on the other end. He said, I appreciate your honesty. And I said, look, I'm a Christian, and I, won't, I don't want to do nothing wrong. And I want my... He said, man, I appreciate that. He said, most people just walk off stuff. I said, now, I bought $35 worth, I think $35 worth of gas. I bought, we bought, we spent about $40. And I said, but I'll send this to you. It cost me 50 cents to mail it. And it's 59 cents, tax and all. And I, he said, don't worry about it. That's on us. I mean, you know that's what he's going to say. He said, it's on us. Don't I said, I just want my conscience clear. Now, you sit there tonight and say, oh, Brother Danny, that's silly. I'm going to tell you something. The Lord said, if you're faithful in that which is least, you'll be faithful. If you can't trust a man with a dollar, you might not can trust him with a thousand. Who told you it's all right still? Or ties. Who told you? Oh, well, you give in other ways. Who told you that? Who told you? Well, you visit a lot and you do a lot to help the church, so that's your tithes. It wasn't the Lord who told you that. <whistles> Having fun now, anyway. <laughs> Lastly, let me say this third, and I'm done. In your everyday life, hey, who told you, ladies, that if you had, quote, her husband, that you could really be right with God and happy and live a happy... Who told you that? Do you honestly think the Holy Ghost came to you and said, if you was only married to Him, man, you could be... Look how good He is to her. You just see Him when He's here putting on a big act. And you think, boy, if you was on The Holy Ghost didn't... Who, t who told you that? Boy, some of you people look like you've just been slapped in the face with a wet rag. You're sitting there in shock. I'm a, who told you that? that? God told Adam. Who told you that, Adam? Let me ask you tonight. Who told you that you'd be better off to poison your husband and kill him? The Lord? I don't think so. I don't think so. The woman came up to Billy Kelly one time. He preached and he, she said, I hate your preaching. She said, I can't stand to look at you. You're ugly. He said, you ain't, you know, Miss America. And she said, if you was my husband, I'd put poison in your food. He said, if you was my wife, I'd eat it. <laughs> Who told you? Who told you that educating your children is the main thing? Who told you that? Who told you that your child getting a quality education and going to college is the most important thing? Who told you that? I challenge you to show me in that book where God said that. Don't go crazy on me. It does, you should learn all you can, can all you learn. You should, get, you should be smart. You should be up on things. You should understand life. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with getting a good education and making a good living. But I will tell you the Lord didn't tell you that was the main thing. Who told you science was right? Who told you that? Who told you music is harmless and it's all right because you're mature and you can handle it and you can listen to country music talking about adultery all day and wicked music that gets hold of your flesh and it won't hurt you? Who told you that? Who told you that you're, you can handle it a little bit because you're strong? You're weak or you wouldn't even be listening to it. One man, man told me this, said, uh, Girls, You'll find your godly husband. Hey, girls, listen. Finding a godly man is like finding a parking place at Walmart. All the good ones are took and the rest is handicapped. <laughs> Say amen right there. Who told you music was harmless? Who told you that? It ain't. 
who told you it's all right to watch R-rated movies as long as you don't watch X. The Lord didn't tell you that. I'm telling you, the Lord didn't tell you that. You know who told you that? That old serpent. That old serpent. The question tonight is, who told you that? Who told you that? The Bible said there are many voices out in the world. You better be careful who's talking to you. You better be careful. Because if the Bible said in the last days, it'll be seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Who told you that? You better get it straight tonight. I challenge everybody in here. Read that book. Pray. And ask God's Spirit to lead you. You're thinking according to that book. Because that old serpent's talking day and night. Every time you turn the radio on, internet, YouTube, TV, the devil's a-talking. And he'll tell you stuff. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Come on, Miss Desi, play softly tonight.